Hey guys, what is up? It is Peace of Prestige, and today I am here showing you a new video of Roko's Tekken World, and this is going to be building Pentherophis. And Pentherophis is the uh, B&M hyper coaster that I built in Roko's Tekken World, and this is the time lapse footage. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, basically, this is four or five times the speed, something about uh, something like that. And uh, basically, what you can see me do right here is create this giant lake in the center of the park. Now. Um, Filling it up with water was a real pain in the butt, since, you know, the water edit uh, editing tool, it takes a lot of time to fill up this this pond. And at a certain moment, you know, it started overflowing. So when you release the button, uh, there's actually waves going out in every single direction. And, you know, it's just, as you can see, it just goes straight over the land. And it's just really weird trying to remove it. And, you know, um, basically what I wanted to build is a, a, was a little island in the center of the uh, this thing. And I found that it was pretty hard to, to get a good, uh, basically a good shape of it. But I think in the end, uh, I did all right. I put some foliage on there, you know, some little plants and trees and all that good stuff. Uh, but basically, the coaster that you saw in the last video, Pentherophis. Uh, also, there's a link in the uh, in the description and also a link on the screen if you haven't got your annotations off. Uh, but basically. That coaster, uh, in the video, it had a very low frame rate, and basically I was recording at about 15 to 20, and normally, you know, Rollercoaster Tekken 3 runs at 30, and I record in 30, and I basically uh, force the frame rate to be 30. Uh, but this game, it just doesn't make it to 30. Uh, it's really heavy, Some, uh, somehow it just really lags out the game. I don't know exactly if it's the lighting or uh, something else. Uh, there's no um, ambient occlusion. And there's also no anti-aliasing, if I'm correct, from what I see in my screenshots. So basically, I have no idea what is lagging out the game. Maybe it's the engine that's just really acting up. Uh, but we'll have to see. I hope they fix that, you know, when the uh, game actually gets out. Uh, December 10th. I don't think they'll make it on December 10th. Uh, but that's just because this game, it needs so much work right now to, you know, to become a good game. That... You know, in a couple of months, I don't know if that's enough time. As you can see here, I screwed up with the station. I put it the wrong way around. I basically wanted this coaster to go kind of around this uh, lake. But in the end, I decided to just stick it on one side. And as you can see here, I actually added a little booster segment. And I was thinking, you know, in, in No Limits 1, uh, basically there was a transport track that you could use for launches and also for normal transport tracks. And that's why I used the booster right there. Uh, the coaster wouldn't really make it on its own. Uh, it would kind of roll back into the station, I suppose. So, basically, I just put that booster there and I tried to make this lift hill as straight as possible. I see a lot of lift hills that are just really wonky and twisted and all that stuff and I really don't want that. Uh, so, I really pay attention to making things straight. Now, as you can see here, the first drop, I'm trying to make the pullout very, very smooth. Uh, since this is a hyper coaster, you know, it's going to have some speed going down the hill and it's going to, you know... Uh, it should be as smooth as possible. I was kind of thinking about Shambhala right here. You know, the pullout of Shambhala is it's very big. Basically, it just goes down in the first uh, couple of meters, actually. And then it just kind of smooths out and levels off. So basically, right here, I'm trying to make this overbank. And, you know, what I saw in this coaster builder is basically you can make any shape that you want. But, you know, when you start doing loops and all that kind of jazz, somehow the coaster builder just really spasms out and just, it creates these really weird rolls. Uh, it basically rolls the entire track around 360 degrees. So you get a barrel roll in about a couple of meters and it just looks really wonky. Uh, luckily with the hyper coasters, you don't have that problem. So that's why I'm really happy using this type of coaster. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's basically just that, you know, trying to make some humps. I actually did a special element that I saw uh, for the first time in my life on Shambhala, the ride in uh, Porta Ventura in Spain. And that's basically, uh, I call it the awesome turn. I don't know if it's actually the uh, original name, like the official name of it. Right here, you can actually see that the track was all twisted. But basically, I don't know if that's the official term for the element, uh, the awesome turn. But it's basically sort of like a helix. Um, slash hammerhead turn so it's it's kind of weird uh, but you can see it right here this is basically the entire shape of it you basically go into this overbank and you turn around 360 degrees and come back and I really like this element it's really hard to get it you know to go smoothly um, but in the end I think it really paid off it, it became a really nice element uh, on the end of this track so I'm really happy about that now one more thing about this track is actually that the rails are very thick compared to the spine of the coasters. That means, basically, 
uh, B&M tracks, they have this pretty big spine, the buck spine, uh, it's a rectangle, and then they have these cross ties and they got the rails, and the rails are pretty thin compared to the spine, and right now actually in this game, uh, I feel like the, the, the rails are way too big, they're very big, I don't know if that's because of uh, copyright infringement with B&M, uh, I don't know if the company is actually like, you know, talked about this, um, but I kind of feel like they couldn't use the actual design for some reason. Uh, so they decided to stick with this and I'm, you know, I'm not really happy with it. Uh, it doesn't really look good. It doesn't really look like a B&M coaster, to be honest. Of course you can see it because it has a box spine, but I mean, I don't know. It's just, it just doesn't have that feel to it. Now right here, I tried to make something cool. Uh, basically a turn that goes over the water. It kind of skims the water and there should, there should be fountains. So if you see the coaster, the on ride, you should think, that, you know, when the coaster goes past this area, there's actual, actual, like, fountains, ride events. Uh, they go off when you go past it. That would be pretty cool. Uh, kind of a scoop effect. But, you know, it's Rollercoaster Typhoon World. It's only early beta. It doesn't work. Uh, there's nothing like that yet. I don't know, actually, if there's gonna, you know, gonna be something like ride events. I hope there is, because Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 got a lot better because there were ride events. Now, uh, basically moving on, trying to finish this ride, what I was trying to go for is an MCBR. The MCBR is basically a mid-course brake run, and most uh, coasters of B&M actually have this thing. And it's basically um, kind of like a block brake, emergency brake, and it just makes sure, you know, it trims the coaster speed a little bit downwards, uh, so that it goes through the last couple of elements, which are mostly smaller than the starters. Um, you know, it makes him go through it smoothly because it's not that fast. And also, if there's a problem in the next block, it, the train can actually make an emergency stop and the people can evacuate. Um, but somehow, you know, I forgot to, to actually make it brakes. And it, I think if I actually made it into brakes, uh, the coaster would be too slow or even stop right there. And I'm not sure really, you know, how these brakes work. I tried to um, build a couple of coasters with them, but, you know, it's just, it's still a little wonky. The, the thing to design them with is very very wonky uh you, you got this brake force it has nothing to do with speed i think well of course it does a little bit but you know it's it's you can't really easily say like okay the coaster can go 30 miles an hour and if it goes faster than that it will break but you know it just you, it doesn't give you that option i hope they bring that in later instead of the brake force which is very weird uh basically making the last helix right now and as you can see, that's basically the end of the coaster right now. I'm just going to add a little brake segment and uh, after smoothing this thing out, uh, which kind of was also a pain in the butt, but it's a lot easier than in the old No Limits. Uh, but what I do really do miss in this game is a smooth function. In No Limits, you have this very great function which could smooth out your track. It was just amazing and they don't have it in here. But basically, that is the entire layout. So yeah, uh, go ahead and check out the off-right and on-right footage of this coaster. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace from Pieces of Prestige.